I first saw these hills in Mount Veeder, I was attracted by its beauty. I felt it came back to the tradition the Romans already believed in, that good grapes should grow on the hillsides. Trusting instincts is, is a big part of grape growing and winemaking. In Mr. Hess's case, in Donald's case, he had the instinct that, that Mount Veeder was going to make great wine. Mount Veeder, it's a wild place. You have elevation and you have aspect and you have exposure. Up here on Mount Vida, we have such steep slopes and such porous soils that it's almost like the vines are clinging to the side of the mountain. They really have to work hard just to survive. We get yields that are about half of what you'd expect from a valley floor vineyard. But in our opinion, that is what makes this fruit so special. There is a range and complexity and intensity of flavor profiles that is hard to replicate anywhere else. The Hess Collection is a particularly special location because of its heritage, the sense of place that we have. We've got a strong connection to the arts and to a sense of a creative purpose, a real destination and a location within Napa. Persistence is not just a virtue in the wine industry, it's a requirement. You look at any wine growing and wine making family throughout history, it takes multiple generations to establish an international brand. That is all about persistence. I was very fortunate to be able to work with Donald, especially in the first 10 years I was here. Donald is a man with incredible integrity. Donald is a man of great vision and he absolutely knows what he wants from the winery and that's what set us off on our course. My father-in-law, Donald Hess, first came to Napa in the late 1970s. He was actually coming here in search of water, and he was looking for a way to expand his water business from Europe into America. Instead of falling in love with water, he fell in love with the wine, and he was particularly drawn to the mountain Appalachians in Napa because they were a bit cooler and they were in line with his European flavor profiles. Myself and my wife, Sabrina, took over in 2012 which was actually our 30th vintage. Tim and I feel really grateful and privileged to have the baton handed to us as the next generation of the family. And of course, we're really aware of the responsibility that comes with that. We're keen to honor Donald's legacy, as well as pursue what really resonates for us so that the winery remains dynamic and alive. The investments we've been making in the vineyards um, and also in the winery facilities really support the amazing established heritage wines, but they also provide a foundation for our next generation of luxury wines. It's a great family to work for, and for somebody like me who's a winemaker, an artist, and a farmer, it's been a great place to work because they're willing to do what it takes to make top quality. In almost all the big wine regions in Europe, you'll see the vines on the slopes Berries are usually smaller, and they're much more concentrated. Mount Veeder is one of the five mountain Appalachians in Napa Valley. We're right on the southernmost edge of the Mayakama Mountains, the mountain range that separates the city of Napa to the city of Sonoma. The elevation for us is all about temperature. The higher you go up, as you might suspect, the cooler it gets. However, there's a caveat to that. It's also out of the fog. So you get a lot of days with nice sunny conditions and it creates wines that are extremely dark in color, really intense tannins. Our Veter Hills Vineyard at 900 feet is much different than our Veter Summit Vineyard at 1800 feet. Once you've identified what works best in that microclimate, you can use that elevation and just enhance the wines and accelerate your quality. To grow grapes uh, on Mount Veter in this environment uh, is like to grow multiple children's and uh, every children has his own personality and wants to get to something different. And uh, it's very exciting uh, to mentor each of those single blocks uh, to become uh, what they want to be, to get them to be mature. That's the way you extract the best quality and that's what makes Mount Veeder so diverse. We have more soil types up here than nearly any other Appalachian in Napa Valley. There's a great old saying on Mount Veeder, if you don't like the ground, move three feet and it's dang near true. 
we're also able to define with a lot more precision using the latest technology where to put the right variety, what rootstock to use, how much water is needed, and we'll use those as a blueprint to go towards the future and building on that quality and making it even better. I find compelling to be part of this process and it is very exciting to have the opportunity to work with vineyards to allow them to fully express themselves because I believe that the ultimate goal of growing grapes here on the mountain is not to force a system to be something that is not, but just to give the opportunity to the mountain, to the blocks to express themselves so that they can show what Mount Vida is about. It's the red dirt, it's the rocky and very shallow soils that make a really concentrated wine. That leads into great ageability. Most people know that mountain Cabernets have much bigger tannin, and it's something as a grower and a winemaker you have to work with and control a bit, but it also makes for extremely wonderfully age-worthy Cabernets. I feel Mount Vida, it's a spirituale, spiritual between the mountain and the vineyards. Running a winery incorporates so many interesting challenges. At our core, we're farmers, and it's critical not only that we've got the skills to grow grapefruit that reflects the essence of the terroir, but that we have the ability to respond to Mother Nature. Our winemaking team then overlay their artistic and creative skills and experience to ensure we give the best expression we can to each vintage and to the terroir. The cycle up here is 365 days a year, there's no doubt. We start with pruning in the winter from December to February, bud break in March. We manage the canopy and the growth for the best flavor extraction, if you will, from April through July. Don't forget we're on the side of a mountain, so we've got a lot of forest and, and um, general upkeep. That happens right before the harvest, so we work on that August, September. We pick in October. It's a bit of a mystery every year, and you've got to use that experience and that gut feel to get there. I get one shot a year growing the best grapes and making the best wine. And if I want to reload and try something else, it's going to take me another vintage to do it. Usually the efforts are worth it. The rewards are there, the rewards are worth it. Blending is something that they can't teach you in school. It's not intuitive. A lot of times you can take several lots that you might like but don't love, put them together and they sing. So there's a lot of art to it. There's a lot of trial and error. It takes hours and hours and hours at the blending table to get it just right. But when you get it right, you know it, and that's what makes that part worthwhile for me. Yeah, I do the liquid art here. Art for me has nothing to do with logics. When a painting touches you, you know it. If you are lucky enough to be a collector, you should share it with other people. Like wine, rarely you open a, a bottle of wine for yourself. Art really runs through the entire family. My mother and Donald actually met through art. They were both going to the same Andy Goldsworthy exhibition that was happening in Scotland at the time. And I'm always reminded of that when I walk through the galleries and see his pieces. Donald had two creative passions that he wished to pursue during his lifetime, and those were art and wine. And he worked really hard to make sure that they were accessible to everybody and not just the preserver, the privileged. It's so easy to feel intimidated by wine and by art. You can feel intimidated when you consult a wine list or when you go and visit a gallery, you can feel like you should know more about art or the artist. And our philosophy has always been that uh, art and wine should be enjoyed and available to everybody. And the most important questions you can ask when you're dealing with wine or art is, do you like it and how does it make you feel? Donald Hess was one of the pioneer of Napa Valley and he came to the mountains with a vision. He came from a foreign country and he developed something that wasn't here. Now we have the next generation in the Hess family from being here many, many years, it's like a rebirth. There's a new look, there's a new feel, there's a new energy, and quite frankly, a very clear and distinct vision for the future. To maintain the legacy of Donald Hess, it's important while allowing the future to also continue to happen. Donald is definitely interwoven in these walls from the art collection to what we're doing in back. Donald is definitely still a big personality in the place. 
Donald always spoke about nurturing the land and putting back what you take. In effect, what we today talk about is sustainability. For decades now, we have been investing in a system of initiatives to support and to reinforce our commitment to sustainable farming and business practices. We know that most of our value lives in our land, so it's imperative that we, year in, year out, nurture and protect the land. In a world that's increasingly virtual, it feels really grounding to have a place like this. There's a strong connection to the land, to the farming of the land, to the wine and the food we produce from it. And we really appreciate what we have here in California, where you put something in the ground and boom, it grows. Um, I also love the traceability, knowing what's in the soil, knowing what's in the water. Um, with climate change and the direction that the world's going in, it feels like it's getting harder and harder to get back to basics. And when it's your land, it's a little bit easier to do. I've been working on this mountain for close to 40 years now, and I wouldn't still be here if I didn't think the wine quality was outstanding. We strive to do everything at the highest possible level that we can, and we aim to do it with depth and integrity. It's not just about getting to the point where you have amazing wine in the glass. It really matters to us about how we get there. It matters about how we protect the land, how we look after our water, how we navigate the relational dynamics between our family and our broader Hess family and the people who work here. When I walk through the vineyards, I respect what a vine has to produce, a couple of pounds of marvelous grapes. It's about being respectful of the past, but also about building something for the future. The line is from our family crest. It's been a symbol of the Hess family for the past five generations. Donald always says you should live each day with the heart and courage of a lion. And so for us, the lion has come to symbolize the persistence and the integrity that we need to face our challenges today and for generations to come.